Hello everyone, welcome to Labor Economics. This is Labor Supply Chapter 2 and this is Part 4. In this part we'll talk about how workers make their hours of work and consumption decision. So we are putting in different curves together with the budget constraint. So individuals choose consumption and leisure to maximize their utility. So they're trying to reach to the highest utility indifference curve with the given budget line. So indifference curves, I say ICs, indifference curves, show us what we want, right? I want more consumption, more leisure. You know what? Maybe I don't want to work at all, which is not true. But I, humans prefer least work with the maximum consumption, right? However, budget line brings them to the reality. Budget line is an opportunity set, budget constraint shows you what we can afford so what we want what we can afford we're going to find the best combination okay so you're trying to go to the highest indifference curve given your budget constraint so try to go to the highest indifference curve highest indifference curve i see given the budget constraint or budget line so optimal consumption leisure bundle we actually put like a star on top of them right c star l star this bundle is given by the point where the budget line is tangent touching to the indifference curve so budget line tangent to the indifference curve at this point the marginal rate of substitution between consumption and leisure which is the slope of the indifference curve is exactly equal to the wage rate which is the absolute value of the um slope of the budget line so any other consumption leisure bundle on budget constraint would give the individual less utility so let's see it graphically okay so this is consumption y-axis this is going to be hours of leisure so i want to show you you know the budget line is like the i mean sorry the coordinates and this graph is Consumption measured from zero to here 1200 and leisure is measured from zero to 110 hours or so. Okay, there's also they put a shadow. We put a shadow uh, line here. This is hours of work. So there are 164 hours a week, right? 54 of them is maybe sleep. So you have truly 110 hours, right? of total so here total time assumption is made to be 110 so maximum leisure you can get is 110 then hours of work i'm going to put h for this h is zero so when leisure is zero hours that means you worked every waking hour so your hours of work is leisure is zero your hours of work is 110 this is one extreme and the other extreme is leisure is equal to 110 to the maximum T level and hours of work is zero. So you didn't work at all, right? These are two uh, extremes. So there is a set of indifference curves here. U0 is a lower indifference curve, convex to the origin, downward sloping. U star, U1. Okay, so higher the indifference curve is better. For instance, if I had no budget line, I would want U1. I want to be on U1. However, if I have a budget line looking like this, right? If this is my budget line, folks, this is my budget line. If this is my budget line, all right? And this is the endowment point right here. That means your non-library income is actually $100 according to this graph right and if this is my budget line then i'm going to find there are millions of indifference curves here on the in an infinite number of indifference curves in this plane so here one another one they don't intersect so we're trying to find so go to your budget line find the indifference curve that is tangent to it that means it's touching at one point only this indifference curve u star is tangent to your budget line so this p point p is optimal folks that's the optimal leisure hours of work and consumption combination so it's like 70 hours of leisure and some consumption okay so we put stars it's 500 dollars of consumption goods and 70 hours of leisure it also corresponds to 40 hours of work 
Okay. So if you work 40 hours, you make $500 a week. Okay. Uh, P is the optimal labor, leisure, and hours of work and consumption combination for this person. So I want to show you why other points are not optimal. So if you look at point A, okay, you are on your budget line, right? We need to be on our budget line. This is my budget line. I need to be on my budget line. So one possible point I can choose is point A. However, point A is problematic. Why? Because I'm actually not using all my... Uh, all my resources to go to the maximum level of utility. So at point A, I'm actually on indifference curve U0. U0 is lower than U star. Look at this. U0 indifference curve. That utility level is much less, less than U star. So you're not maximizing your utility. Yes, you're spending all your budget. So on this budget line, you're spending all your money. And you are actually on a feasible level, right? You are uh, consuming maximum level of consumption goods and maximum leisure. However, you're not achieving a higher utility. You can actually go to the point P where you're on a higher indifference curve, more happiness, and you are still on the budget line, okay? Let's take a look at point Y. This point is unattainable. You can't achieve this because your budget line takes you all the way up to here. That's the maximum you can achieve. You can achieve everything on budget line or inside. But if you go to inside, you're not utilizing all your resources. You're basically not taking uh, full consumption and you're not also taking full leisure and or, okay? So optimal point happens where the budget line right here endowment point where your budget line is tangent to your indifference curve and there's lots of different indifference curves here infinite number okay so lots of them how do we choose one you know higher is better i want this one but you can't really go to this one your budget line will determine what's the maximum happiness utility you can achieve. So I'm going to pick a point where they're where they are uh, tangent to each other. So marginal rate of substitution between consumption and leisure that shows you the trade-off between them two needs to be equal to the wage rate. Okay. So I'll see you in part oops, five. In this part, we will be doing comparative statistics. We are going to talk about the effect of change in non-labor income on hours of work. So what if your V changes, V goes up or down? Will you work more hours or less hours? Well, common sense says that you're going to work actually less hours. But it depends on if leisure is a normal good or inferior good. I'll see you on part five. And don't forget to subscribe so that you will... Uh, be notified whenever there's a new video. Bye!